Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will see some more examples of group action and then try to understand the orbit stabilizer theorem in better way. Okay, so, let us uh, look at this particular example. Okay, let us start with the group G. Assume G is a finite group. So, now what we will do? We will take this particular subset of uh, this group G, call it sigma k, where uh, k is some natural number. Okay, so let's say k is actually between uh, one to the order of G. Okay. So then, what is sigma k? You collect all the subsets S of G such that the cardinality of S is exactly k. So now what we want to do, we want to make uh, G act on this sigma k and there is this natural action given by left multiplication. So G acts on sigma k via the following formula, Okay, you take G and then take some S yes and then you send it to this following subset G S, S in capital S, so which is by definition. G capital S. So, this is just uh, given by the left multiplication. Okay. So, this is acting via indeed left multiplication. So, now uh, we have the following question. Okay. So, why this uh, G S also has cardinality k? So, then only the G S has to be uh, can be inside sigma k. So, let us look at this map from S to uh, G S. So, given by small s goes to G small s. Okay. So, this map is indeed injective map. Okay. For example, if you look at the image is G S 1 is equal to G S 2 for some S 1 S 2 in capital S. So, then what will have you apply G inverse on both sides. So, then that will imply that G inverse of G S 1 is same as G inverse of G S 2. So, that will imply that immediately S 1 equal to S 2. So, we have this la cancellation, left cancellation in the group. So, that makes this uh, left multiplication of uh, uh, this any element is actually an injective map from S 2 G S. So, since uh, this is injective and uh, you can easily see that this is also a surjective because if you start with some element S dash here, look at G inverse of S dash. Okay. So, then uh, you can actually, oh sorry. So, this S dash will be some, let me rewrite. So, if you take some element in G S, so it is going to look like G S dash okay, for some S yes dash inside uh, capital S. So, in particularly, so this S yes dash is mapped to the G S dash. So, by definition, this map is surjective and we have verified it is injective. So, it gives you bijective correspondence between S and G S. So, that means the cardinality of S is same as the cardinality of G S which is exactly K. So, in particularly G acts on this sigma k via this particular action. Okay, let us try to understand uh, this action more closely. Okay. So, let us start with the subgroup S of G. Okay. Let us say S is a subgroup. So, then what will happen to the orbit? Okay. So, this S is definitely an element of sigma k. So, one can look at the orbit. The orbit by definition what it is, it is all the images of this S under this uh, action of capital G. So, that means this is just G S where G in capital G. So, this is nothing but what? This is nothing but all the left cosets of this capital S inside G. So, this is exactly G mod S. So, which is sitting inside sigma k. So, for capital S which is a subgroup, so, we have the orbit being exactly G mod S. So, now what is the stabilizer? The stabilizer is going to be, so those G in capital G such that that is that fixes this capital S. So, since S is a subgroup, 
okay from this gs being s and identity being in capital s you can immediately see that g must be in capital s and this is actually if and only if okay so gs is capital s if and only if g is in capital s so that tells you that so this stabilizer gs is nothing but those g in g such that g in capital s so which is nothing but capital s okay so now you can actually reinterpret orbit stabilizer theorem as follows so what is it orbit stabilizer theorem says the cardinality of the orbit is exactly the cardinality of the group divided by cardinality of the stabilizer but the cardinality of the orbit is exactly the cardinality of g mod s but what is the cardinality of g divided by cardinality of the stabilizer which is cardinality of g divided by cardinality of s so this is actually lagrange theorem which comes for free as orbit stabilizer theorem okay so this is some what important action this kind of action we will see when we prove actually uh, silos theorem okay that is why i am actually defining these actions now so now similar to this uh, one can define uh, now using the conjugation okay some action of g on elements of sorry subsets of g that are having a cardinality k again you pick k you fix k from 1 to the cardinality of g now look at this set okay let's call it uh, ck so this is uh, those subsets of g okay okay i already named it as uh, sigma k so let's use this only so we are going to use the same thing so sigma k which has cardinality exactly k so we will also see in a minute there is another natural set on which also g can act so now i want to uh, act uh, g on the sigma k why are now conjugation okay so g acts on sigma k why are now conjugation so these two are very powerful things one is left to multiplication another one is conjugation again we also have right multiplication but that is uh, uh, indeed similar to left multiplication okay so how this g acts on sigma k via conjugation so as before okay start with some element g in g and then some element s in sigma k so then define this g dot s to be just g s g inverse the conjugate of this s so that is by definition g small s g inverse and s in capital s so i will leave it to you to check there is this natural surjective map from uh, g uh, from capital s to g s g inverse given by s goes to g s g inverse so this is uh, by definition is surjective map and this is also injective map because we have left cancellation and right cancellation in g so this is a bijective correspondence in particularly the cardinality of s is same as cardinality of g s g inverse so now uh, that says that this is an element again in sigma k so i will leave it you to check okay this indeed defines action of g on sigma k so this is something you can verify so now uh, what happens if you take uh, the subgroups okay so let us start with uh, s being a subgroup inside g so this is just a let us say subgroup so then what happens to the orbit the orbit of s is going to be all images of this capital s under the action of capital g so which is going to be g capital s g inverse where g in capital g so this is nothing but what this is the set of all conjugates of set of all conjugates of capital s in g okay so now if you use orbit stabilizer theorem it says that the cardinality of this is exactly equal to cardinality of g divided by the cardinality of the stabilizer so let us calculate the stabilizer the stabilizer by definition those elements g in g such that g fixes this capital s under this conjugation action that means g s g inverse 
should be exactly S. But this is nothing but normalizer of this capital S. So normalizer of S in G. Okay. So now, indeed, what we uh, we we prove using this uh, uh, orbit stabilizer theorem, this number of this conjugates of S in G is exactly equal to the cardinality of G divided by the cardinality of the normalizer. Okay. So, this is something again one can directly prove, okay, but it can be obtained as application of this orbit stabilizer theorem. So, this group action as I said before, it is it is unifies all these things in very nice way and then as an application whatever group action that you take you can immediately see that some of these results for free. Okay. So, now uh, like I said before uh, we have a natural subset of this sigma k uh, that is actually g invariant. So, let us call that is actually c k. So, c k you can take it to be uh, those now, subset of G which is also a subgroup, okay. take S be a subgroup of G such that the cardinality of S is K. So, then you can easily see that if S is a subgroup of G if and only if the conjugate of S is also a subgroup of G. Okay. So, that means because the, con the conjugate is given by the inner atom of sum. Okay. Uh, image of the inner atom of sum. So, it must be a subgroup. So, in particularly this particular subset C k is indeed actually invariant subset of this action of capital G. So, in particularly G actually acting on this C k as well. Okay. So, you can directly define the same formula and then verify that that is the action of G on C k and then the similar stories actually can be verified. Okay, what is the orbit? What is the uh, stabilizer and so on? That can be calculated. So I will actually uh, give you one more important application of orbit stabilizer theorem. Okay, so one can use this orbit stabilizer theorem uh, to calculate sometimes the order of the group. Okay, that's very very interesting application of this orbit stabilizer theorem. So, let us uh, try to do it in some particular example. Okay. So, we take this uh, automorphisms of some graph and then I will demonstrate uh, so the claim that I made. Okay. So, let us look at uh, uh, this cube. Okay. So, this cube uh, let, let me draw it. Uh, so, this cube looks something like this. Okay, it doesn't look that great, but still, it's okay. So now let's label them like one, two, three, four, and then six, five, seven, eight. So now this is a graph. Okay, so it has uh, eight vertices. The vertex of this graph. Okay, this is a graph that I am interested in. So, this is just uh, these 8 vertices and edges are just given by this, uh, these edges that join. So, now recall that uh, what is the automorphism of this graph. So, this automorphism of this graph, so this is just a permutations of this vertices satisfying some property. Okay. Those permutations on this vertices such that so, whenever you have edge from i to j, okay, then if and only if that should imply there is an edge from sigma i to sigma j. Okay. So, this is the condition. So, if you use this E of g as the, the set of edges, set of edges of g. So, then you can see that because this is a simple graph. So, that means there is no loop and uh, 
multiple edges. So, the edges can be uh, just denoted as just a tuple. Okay. So, the let us say E of i comma j is the edge between edge between i and j. So, in particularly E of ij is same as E of j i. Okay. So, because there is no difference between the edge between 1 and 2 and 2 1 1. So, now if you take uh, you can see that uh, the condition that I have written here is same as saying that whenever E of i comma j is an edge of this graph if and only if E of sigma of i sigma of j. So, that is also edge of this graph. Okay. So, that is very important condition for the automorphism. So, these are all permutation of the vertices that satisfies this very important property of this uh, graph uh, morphisms. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, the definition of automorphism of G and under the composition we have already seen that this actually form a group. So, now we are interested in actually counting the cardinality of this group. Okay. Call this group is G and then we want to count how many elements are there in this group. So, now uh, what we will do we make this group act on this vertices. Okay. So, we see G naturally acts on this vertex set 1 to A. Okay. So, now what we can do we can easily see that because we are taking all possible automorphism of G. So, you can see that this action that we are talking about here. So, this is again just by permuting. Okay. So, G is a subgroup of uh, this S8, S8 acts on this 1 to 8 by permuting 1 to 8. So, in particularly uh, this G being a subgroup of S8 the same action uh, is there by permuting the vertices it acts. So, now uh, you can actually I will leave it to you to check this action is actually a transitive action. So, check so this action is indeed transitive action. So, that means you can go from one vertex to another vertex by some automorphism. Okay. So, you can just look at the graph you can see that it can be done. Okay. There are many many symmetries here for example, you can take a plane that cuts uh, this uh, square in uh, this uh, cube into half. Okay. Take this plane for example, okay, that passes through. So, this uh, plane, so it is cutting this 1, 2 and 3, 4 into off. So, this is with respect to this plane if you reflect you will be getting one such uh, automorphism. Okay. Uh, so, now so using this transitive action using this orbit stabilizer theorem you can see that the cardinality of G is going to be exactly. Okay. So, let us let us look at one particular orbit. So, the orbit of 1 is going to be entire vertex set G. Okay. So, in particularly the cardinality of the orbit is nothing but the cardinality of G divided by the cardinality of the stabilizer. Okay. So, in particularly the cardinality of G is exactly cardinality of the orbit times cardinality of this stabilizer. So, what is the cardinality of the orbit which is exactly 8 okay because o n o 1 is nothing but v g and then times you have this g 1. So, what is g 1? So, g 1 is nothing but those sigma in g such that it 1 is fixed by that sigma okay those automorphisms of g that fixes 1. So, now you can take this g 1 I can make it act on this vertex set okay, because G 1 is contained in G as a subgroup. Okay. So, we can use the same action. Na. So, G 1 is contained in G. So, G is contained in S 8. So, the same action that you have here can be restricted to G can be restricted to G 1. 
ok. So, what G 1 does? G 1 actually fixes this one all possible automorphism of this graph which fixes this one ok. But what is the property of this automorphism? If you go back to the diagram ok you can see that if you fix this vertex one all its neighbors ok can be only at most permuted. So, look at this diagram locally you can see that one is here and two is here. So, let us see the labeling 6 is here ok and then 1 is also connected with 4 so mainly 1 is connected with 2 5 and 4 ok only these 3 uh, things are neighbors so 2 4 and 5 so if you take for example the image of you take some sigma in G 1 ok then we know that sigma of 1 is 1. So, what is about sigma of 2 ok. So, if you take sigma of 2, sigma of 4, sigma of 5. So, what properties these vertices should have? So, they all should be connected with 1 because 1 is connected with 2. So, sigma of 1 should be connected with sigma of 2 that means sigma of 1 is 1. So, sigma 2 is connected with 1 ok you can see that. So, these are just connected with 1 ok, but how many possibilities are there. So, we have only the neighbor of this 1 that is exactly 3 vertices ok. So, only 2 is there, 5 is there and 4 is there ok. So, that forces that the sigma of 2, sigma of 4, sigma of 5. So, this is exactly comes from this 2, 4, 5. So, that means sigma just permutes this 2, 4, 5 ok. So, in particularly if I if we restrict the action of G 1 to these uh, vertices again ok. So, then if you are interested in calculating ok the cardinality of G 1. So, then what will happen for example, I can pick 2 ok let us pick 2, 2 is in the vertex set. So, then you can actually uh, restrict again the action of G 1 to only 2, 4, 5 ok. So, that can be done. So, restrict the action of G 1 to 2, 4, 5 because we just verified that 2, 4, 5 is invariant subset. So, in particularly I am taking 2 from this particular x and then looking at what happens to the orbit and as well as the stabilizer ok. So, the cardinality of G 1 divided by the cardinality of the stabilizer of this. So, let us denote it by G 1 2 ok. So, let us call G 1 2 is the stabilizer of this 2 inside G 1 ok. So, what will be the ratio that will be exactly the orbit of 2 inside x ok this x we are talking about. But if you think about it I will leave it as exercise again G 1 action of uh, this uh, action of G 1 on this 2 4 5 it is going to be transitive action ok. One will be able to uh, get permutations uh, sorry automorphism of this G that fixes 1 that takes 2 to 4, 4 to 5 and so on. So, that means the cardinality of this is exactly 3 ok. So, indeed what we proved we proved that the cardinality of G 1 is 3 times the cardinality of G 1 that is fixed by that fixes 2 ok. So, if you go back to the original equation then you can see that the cardinality of G is given by 8 times cardinality of G 1. So, if you substitute this back you can get the cardinality of G equal to 8 times 3 times the cardinality of G 1 2. 
but let us recall what is G 1 2. G 1 2 is nothing but those sigma in G 1 that fixes 2, but what is G 1? So, G 1 recall, so G 1 is nothing but those sigma in G such that that fixes 1. So, that means if you think about it then G 1 2 is nothing but those sigma in G such that that fixes 1 as well as 2. Okay? So, it fixes both 1 and 2. So, now take this particular group G 1 2 and again make it act on this vertices and then see what happens. Okay. So, now look at this group. So, this is a group. Okay. So, now we can look at neighbors of 1, 2 and then see what happens. So, go back to our diagram. Okay. So, let me redraw here. So, this is the So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let us double check the labeling. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, now what we are saying you have sigma in G that fixes both 1 as well as 2. So, this is 1, this is 2. So, now look at all the neighbors of 1, 2. So, that will be 5, 6, 4, 3, that is all. Okay. 2 is connected with 1, 4, 3, 6 and 1 is connected with uh, 2, 4, 5. So, these are all the numbers that, that will play important role. So, now uh, if you take uh, this condition sigma of 1 is 1 and sigma of 2 is 2. So, then neighbors of this 1 and 2, okay, they have to play important role. Like now let us look at this 3 and 4. Okay. So, let us look at these vertices 3 and 4. So, you can see that uh, 3 is actually connected with 2. Okay. Then the sigma of 3 has to be again Okay, uh, connected to 2. Similarly, the sigma of 4 that should be connected with 1. Okay. So, you can see that sigma of 3 should be connected with 2, sigma of 4 should be connected with 1. Okay. But 3, 4 already has some edge. So, 3, 4 has edge. So, that means you should have edge between sigma of 3 and sigma of 4. 1, 2 already has edge. So, you should have a picture something like this. So, 1, 2, sigma 3, sigma 4. So, this kind of square should happen. Okay, That is the condition. But if you see uh, from the picture, so you have only two options for that. Okay, One is you can take the top square that is uh, 1, sorry, 1, 2 and then 3, 4 and the, the side square you can take 1, 2 and then 5, 6. Okay. So, these are all the two squares that are possible. So, that means sigma of 3, sigma of 4 either can be 3, 4 or 5, 6. Okay. So, I will leave it you to think about. Uh, so, there are again more restriction because uh, uh, if you take sigma of 5, sigma 6, again you can see what will happen to that. Okay. So, you try to actually verify. If you look at this, uh, the group G 1, 2, okay, acting on again the set of all vertices, okay. then if you look at the orbit of this 3, Okay. 
so then it will have only two choices okay so the orbit of 3 so it will have exactly two choices so this is something i will leave it to verify so then you can prove that so the cardinality of this uh, g12 is going to be exactly equal to the cardinality of the orbit which is 2 times the cardinality of the stabilizer g12 and then 3 so basically what is this uh, g123 so this is those sigma in g12 that fixes 3 okay but if you rewrite this in terms of elements of g you can see that this is those sigma in g such that sigma of 1 is 1 sigma 2 is 2 and sigma 3 is 3 okay this is those automorphism of g that fixes 1 2 and 3 okay so i will leave it to you to think about it and then prove that this is exactly identity map once you fix 1 2 3 so then you you are you are fixing all other vertices there is no other option okay this is something i will leave it to you to verify okay so then using this you can see that this is exactly equal to 2 okay so if you go back to our formula so what is our formula says the cardinality of g equal to 8 into 3 into cardinality of g12 okay we just verified that the cardinality of g12 is nothing but 2 so in particularly the cardinality of uh, this g is 8 into 3 into 2 so that is exactly so 2 power 4 into 3 which is 16 into 3 so there is 30 plus 18 48 so that is the cardinality of g okay so this demonstrate if you have enough information about the orbit and the stabilizers one can also compute the cardinality of g okay so this is also very very important uh, thing because in some sense by knowing uh, the information about the orbit uh, this actually tells us that uh, uh, you can actually kind of come down to some smaller group and computing the order of that smaller group is good enough to compute the order of the bigger group okay there are, there is lots of symmetry that is going around so one can use those symmetries and then uh, try to compute everything explicitly for these groups and group actions okay this actually demonstrates the power of uh, uh, orbit stabilizer theorem so in the next class uh, i will actually start with uh, proving uh, this uh, silos theorems which are very important uh, theorems in finite group theory okay so before that maybe i will do this uh, burnside's lemma which is actually very important lemma uh, from the combinatorial point of view so that actually tells you how to count uh, the cardinality of this x mod g the number of orbits okay so sometime computing the number of orbits also very important okay i will stop here uh, we will continue in the next class thank you